Last week at Black Bear Forge, we took a look at making a wheelwright's or a blacksmith's traveler, a tool used for measuring the circumference of a wooden wagon wheel to transfer that measurement to an iron tire. And we'll take a closer look at exactly how that works when we get to the end of today's video and have this thing assembled and working. But we've got some component parts and we need to do a little bit of work on them. Well, we have all of our pieces forged. Of course, this is the main component here. This is the ring that actually does the measuring. Not quite perfectly round, but it's pretty close. A little bit of filing on the outside here will help quite a bit. I may try to straighten out a little on the sides, but it's not super critical. The hole is not quite big enough for a quarter inch rivet, which is good because it's a little off center. And that gives me the ability to use a file to enlarge it to this side a little bit and help center it up some. Probably will never be perfect because it doesn't need to be enlarged by much, but that should help. This will make a pointer. We'll cut it off and clean this area up, make a little round part there. It doesn't need to stick out both sides. And then figure out what we want this end to look like. It'll at least need a point, but I think I'll try to thin it out a little here and then widen it out a little at the point so it's more of a diamond shape. Kind of like the hands on a watch. And that brings us to the handle part or the yoke, or whatever you want to call it. And this is not quite exactly symmetrical. I didn't think it would be. So we're going to need to do some grinding, filing to finish that up, drill the hole, but then we're going to have to open it up so that we can get the wheel and the pointer and maybe a washer on each side. I'm still thinking about that, but I think a washer might help keep everything running smooth. So I might just put a washer on top of this when I rivet the whole thing together. And finally, we'll need to put a wooden handle on here. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasive. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. I think I made that just a little bit too short, but we can fix it. Now we need to go back to the forge, heat this up. I'm going to put my touch mark in it, and then I need to open these two legs up and spread them apart and bring them back parallel again with a gap wide enough to hold both the ring, the pointer, and I think a washer on each side just to make sure this always spins 
clear through here. It'd be really the pits for a little wobble in this to hang up on here. World's tiniest pair of spurs, a piece of 3 8 bar to space it. It's going to take a little bit of work. It looks like the holes still line up, so that's good. Some more straightening though. Sorry if my hand's in your way there. Okay, so that's kind of how that'll assemble. That rolls very nicely. Definitely a little out of round, but I don't think enough to hurt anything. And then this will be able to slide. But this is just one of the markers. We're gonna need to put another marker on here at some point. And then this has to be riveted together tight enough that you have to want to move this. It has to want to stay in place. But it definitely works. So I think I'm just going to put a little chisel line in here and that will be our number one marker for when you're measuring with this. You can certainly do something fancier than that, but all you need is a mark that you can repeatedly find, just like you would on a ruler, so that's all you really need. I'm going to temporarily hold this together with just a quarter inch bolt. That way I can make sure everything runs smooth and if I need to take it apart for the handle I can do that. But you can see that puts enough pressure on this that that'll then stay put and roll with the wheel. So. We are on the right track.
Well, I think the time has come to assemble our Wheelwright's Traveler. We've got the handle all finished, and I really like the way this handle came out. I think this is walnut that I picked for that. Not really a high-stress application, so any wood you like should work just fine. The wheel's ready to go, but this is one of those projects that you get to this point, you've got about 10 minutes worth of work left to do to assemble it and try it out, and I think I've changed my mind on a few things. Let me explain. Now this antique spins very freely in the yoke, but the pointer that it has on here does not spin freely. It has some tension on there. 
which means there's something else pinching this than just this axle that holds the whole thing together and lets it spin. I envision that there's maybe a little bushing or a hub, maybe you'd call it in there, that this rides on so that the wheel and the pointer are kind of a sub-assembly, and then that's got a hole through it that the axle goes through, and that allows this to spin a little bit more freely. Unfortunately, my wheel does not have a big enough space here to bore that larger to put such a hub in. So I think I'm gonna to need to reinvent the wheel. Well, this wheel anyways. But we'll still assemble this temporarily and take a look at it. And then in a future video, maybe two or three weeks from now, we'll look at another way to make this wheel besides forge welding, something that does not require you to have a plasma cutter or hire a water jet cutter or something like that. I'll also point out that you don't need that pointer. Most of the old ones that were commercially made look just like this one. I think this company made a lot of them. And they all have the pointer. But most of the old hand-forged ones look very much like this does, just a simple spoke straight across, and they don't have a pointer. Instead, you just use a piece of soapstone, and you just mark your measurement on the wheel. In some ways, it's probably more reliable anyways. But we're going to go ahead and assemble it with a pointer, see how it works. Then we'll look at how both methods work and how you actually use this to transfer measurements from one thing to another. Try and get a washer trapped in there. And the wheel. And the pointer. And another washer. I've taken the time to blacken a quarter inch slotted head screw. I think that'll look better on this if it Takes a while for me to get around to finishing it. So that spins nicely. And for now, that pointer's staying put. Maybe I don't need to do anything else to it. Yeah, we might be in, in good shape. Oh, no, see there the pointer slipped. Things are just a little irregular enough that I don't think that pointer is gonna be a reliable point of measurement. But let's see how this thing works. Now I don't have an actual wagon wheel to measure. I thought I had one around here somewhere, but I don't. So we're just gonna pretend we need to put a band around this thing. And you need to know where you're starting. If it's got an obvious starting point, some sort of a seam in the wood on a wagon wheel, or something that you can always find and identify, that's a good place to start. For this, I'm gonna use a piece of soapstone I'm going to put a little mark right there, and that's where we'll start. So we're going to start, start here, and we want to count every revolution. Every time that chisel mark comes around, there's one. This is slipping a little bit, so it's not going to be real accurate. You need to really be careful not to let it skip ahead or slide or anything like that. There's two. And that's not quite three, so you set the pointer where it comes to that end mark. And because this pointer is slipping, we just go back to the soapstone and mark the end mark with the soapstone. Try to mark a nice fine line. And then you just transfer this to your other material. So we're going to start right on that chisel mark again. And count one, two, and we'll come just short of three. You gotta make sure the wheel's spinning in the same direction, both measurements. It's gotta go clockwise both times or counterclockwise both times. And then we can mark the measurement. Because the band is slightly larger diameter overall than what it's going to go on, you're going to need to come up with a little bit of an educated guess on how much more to go, maybe about the thickness of the material, further than that measurement to give you enough to make your forge weld. But that's just the basics of this. A lot of people have suggested going over to Ingalls Coat Shop videos, and I'll see if I can find one of him using a traveler, and I'll link to that video up here so you can get a way better idea on how to use a Wheelwright's traveler. I don't really need it. I just thought it'd be a fun project, 
but I do want to do a better job on how this wheel and pointer work, or I'm just going to leave the pointer out altogether because it is not reliable in this case. On this old one, it actually has a couple of holes drilled in it for a starting point, so that would be your first marker, and then you'd still count the revolutions and set that pointer. In reality, I think a silver pencil or a soapstone are probably more reliable than the pointer because it could always get bumped and moved out of the way between the time you measure the wheel and the time you go to the tire. So it's just up to you and how you want to use something like this. Like I say, mostly I just wanted to do it because it looked like a fun project. So that's pretty much the basics of making a Wheelwrights Traveler. If I take the point out and just reassemble it without that little pointer in there, this is a perfectly usable tool and very accurate in style and design and construction methods to a lot of the historical ones you find out there. If you want the pointer, we're gonna to need to figure out a better way to make that work. I'll look at that in a future video and hopefully we'll come up with an idea that works. But there is nothing wrong with having a traveler that doesn't use the pointer. In any case, thanks for stopping by. We will see you for the next video.